Hello everyone. In the last video, we discussed the confounding in three-level factorial design. We saw that how tedious the defining contrast method can be if there are a large number of treatment combinations. Whereas Das method is pretty quick in finding the principal block. Das method is actually used to find the principal block and then other blocks can be found using group theoretic property of the principal block. We have seen this. While discussing the defining contrast method, we also saw that if somehow we can find the K minus P treatment combinations of principal block, which are independent among themselves, then those treatment combinations can be utilized to find the other treatment combinations of the actually we are using those independent K minus P treatment combinations to find the other treatment combinations of the principal block using group theoretic property. But again, to find those K minus P independent treatment combinations, one may have to evaluate the defining contrast for several treatment combinations to find the treatment combinations which actually belong to the principal block. So there is actually a try and error method involved in defining contrast method. Whereas in Das method, one can quickly find the K minus P independent treatment combinations of the principal block and then using the group theoretic property, one can find the other treatment combination that is the complete principal block. And then again, using the same property, one can find the other blocks. So before discussing the theory, let us see one example of confounding 3 raised to 5 design in 3 raised to 2 blocks using Das method and then we will generalize the idea to the theory. So for example suppose the design is 3 raised to 5 to be grouped in 3 square blocks that is 9 blocks. So design we will be calling as 3 raised to 5 comma 3 raised to 2 confounded factorial design. And because the number of blocks are 3 raised to 2 that is the value of p is equal to 2. So we must choose two interactions independently to confound with the nine block. Suppose we choose the effects A, B, D, E square and C, D square, E square. The very first thing that we have to do is express these interactions digitally. Then A, B, D, E square can be written as 1, 1, 0, 1, 2 and C, D square, E square can be written as 0, 0, 1, 2, 2. Now because the value of P is equal to 2, so we have to arrange these 5 columns A, B, C, D, E such that we get an identity matrix of order 2, of order P which is equal to 2. So if you see column A which is 1, 0 and column C which is 0, 1. So if I keep A and C together then the matrix I will get as 1, 0 and 0, 1 and then remaining columns can be put together. So I will write this again. So I keep A in its place. I drag C next to A and then B, D, E are put together and we will just keep the elements under them as they are. Now if you see we have got the identity matrix. Now this entire matrix which is of order 2 by 5 we are going to partition this matrix such that the identity matrix is separated from the remaining columns. This matrix here we will call it A and this matrix here is our identity matrix of order 2. Now right below these two matrices in this cell I will write A prime and in this cell I will write a matrix minus of I3. Now let us write the A prime matrix which is going to be 1 0, 1, 2 and 2, 2 and in this cell here we will be writing minus of I3. Now I3 is an identity matrix of order 3 multiply by minus sign. So all the diagonal elements are minus 1 which must be actually evaluated using modulus 3 operation. Minus 1 modulus 3 is actually congruent to 2. So actually the diagonal elements of the matrix in this cell will all be 2. So all we have to write is 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0 and 0, 0, 2. So this matrix here now actually gives us 3 independent treatment combinations of the principal block which are A, B square, A, C 
square d square and a square c square e square now the linear combination of these treatment combination will actually produce the remaining treatment combination of the principal so if i say the first row in this matrix is r1 the second row is r2 and the third row is r3 the linear combination of r1 r2 and r3 will produce the remaining treatment combinations of the principal block this linear combinations i can write as lambda 1 r1 plus lambda 2 r2 plus lambda 3 r3 where all three lambda i's can assume value 0 1 2 So this way the remaining 24 elements of the principal block will be produced because each block will contain 27 treatment combination and 3 treatment combinations we have already found. So you must have noticed here that in DAS method we don't have to search for the treatment combination using trial and error method. If you have the confounded effects then you can immediately find the independent treatment combinations of principal block and then using them the remaining treatment combination so whatever we understood from this example let us put it in the theory so das method of finding principal block we were discussing and we discussed that das method is used to construct the principal block and remaining blocks can be found easily using the group theoretic property and we saw that if we have to confound a 3 raised to k design in 3 raised to p blocks then first then we need to construct a matrix of order k by k it is actually augmented matrix of four different matrices i p a which is of order p into k minus p and a prime and minus of i and this minus of a k minus p is a diagonal matrix of order k minus p with all the diagonal elements equal to 2 so actually we have to construct this matrix here first i p and a the p rows of this matrix are given the p confounded effects expressed digitally but the k columns representing k factors not necessarily in alphabetical order are arranged such that first p columns form the identity matrix i p this we saw in the example and then the remaining k minus p columns result in the formation of this a matrix note that one need not to use only the given independent confounded effects to construct the above p by k matrix this matrix here one can actually use the generalized confounded effects also to construct this matrix because the p independent confounded effects which are given to you may not always give you the identity matrix of order p that you want so you may have to use generalized confounded effects as well sometimes then the matrix a prime and minus i of order k minus p will give us the independent treatment combinations of the principal block so we know that in all the blocks there will be three raised to k minus p treatment combinations so out of those treatment combinations k minus p we have already found in this matrix here a prime and minus i and the remaining treatment combinations which are actually three raised to k minus p minus of k minus p these remaining treatment combinations can be found using group theoretic property of principal blocks so to illustrate this theory let us solve another example so this time we will be confounding a 3 raised to 4 design in 3 square blocks and the effects or interaction components which are cho chosen to confound with the blocks are a b c and a b square d square so because it is 3 raised to 4 design so k is equal to 4 and 3 square blocks are there so the value of p is equal to 2 so we have to construct this matrix i2 a a prime minus i2 so what we will be doing we will first start with constructing the matrix i2 and a for that we need to express the interaction effects a b c and a b square d square digitally which are actually 1 1 0 and 1 2 0 2 respectively if you see if these digitally expressed effects are put one over other we will still not get the identity matrix you can see it here the two treatment combinations expressed digitally are kept one over another and we see that there is no such column which can give us identity matrix there is one column one zero but we need another column as zero one and there is no column as such so these two independent 
confounded effects which are given to us will not give us the required identity matrix of order 2. So we need to take the help of the generalized confounded effects. And what are the generalized confounded effects? A C square D and B C square D square. And if we express these generalized interactions digitally, they are actually 1021 and 0122. And if written one over another, you will notice that the first two columns will give us the required identity matrix of order 2. Hence, the I2 A2 by 2 matrix is given here. And we see that first two columns are actually composing the identity matrix. Then the remaining two columns of C and D compose the A matrix. The A matrix is again given here 2, 2, 1, 2. So we need to find the matrix A prime minus I. A prime matrix is again here 2, 1, 2, 2. And minus I2 matrix is simply a diagonal matrix of all diagonal elements equal to 2. So this matrix here A prime minus I gives us the independent treatment combinations of the principal block which are A square, B square, C square and a b square d square so now that we have found the treatment combinations which are independent among themselves of the principal block we will find the linear combination of these treatment combinations to find the remaining treatment combinations of the principal block so the principal block is actually produced here see the first two rows in this matrix are actually the independent treatment combinations which we found using the das method if I name them R1 and R2, then 2 R1, 2 R2, R1 plus R2, R1 plus 2 R2, 2 R1 plus R2, then 2 R1 plus 2 R2, and 0 R1 plus 0 R2 will give us the remaining treatment combinations of the principal block. If I generalize this, I can write it as lambda 1 R1 plus lambda 2 R2, where lambda i's both lambda 1 lambda 2 can assume value 0, 1, 2. Let us discuss another example of 3 square design in 3 blocks. So because the value of P is equal to 1, we will be considering only one effect to confound with the block. And that effect is chosen as AB square. Because it is 3 square 3 design, so the value of K is equal to 2. And 3 raised to 1 it is, so the value of P is equal to 1. And if we express AB square digitally, so we will write it as 1 2 so now we have to construct this matrix i and a where i is of order p which is equal to 1 so if i write 1 2 our i matrix is this matrix here actually consists of single element which is 1 and a matrix also consists of single element which is 2 so now we have to find a prime and minus i matrix so a prime will be again 2 because a is 2 and minus of i will also be a single element matrix with that element b equal to 2. So I have got a treatment combination of principal block which is 2 and 2 that is a square b square. Now let us find the other treatment combinations of the principal block. So we have found actually r1 so 2 times r1 will give us another element of principal block and similarly 0 times R1 will give us the one must element of principal block which is 1. So this is our principal block here. Friends we discussed three example on finding the principal block of three level design which is confounded. I hope you must have understood. So before I end this video let me summarize the concept theoretically once again quickly. So we must first express the P treatment combinations digitally and using those P treatment combination we have to find this matrix I and P where I is identity matrix of order P and the remaining column are put together to constitute A. Then we have to find the matrix A prime minus I where A prime is simply transpose of this A matrix found here and minus I is diagonal matrix with all the diagonal elements equal to 2. This A prime minus I gives us the independent treatment combinations of the principal block and then the linear combinations of the rows of this matrix here gives us the remaining treatment combinations of the principal block. Then using the group theoretic property of principal block one can find the remaining block of the confounded design. So if I put it even more concisely then we have to find 
augmented matrix with matrices i a a prime and minus a where i a are the matrix of confounded effects and a prime and minus a gives us the treatment combinations of the principal block so in this video actually we discussed finding the principal block if confounded effects are given now in our next video we will be discussing how to find the confounded effects if you are given some block of a three level factorial design which is confounded in some blocks 